Hello all. Right, today, it's now 5 to 10. Um, I'm going to be taking solar panels to, I'm in Warwick at the moment, St Neots. Used to work a market, St Neots. I say that a lot. Not the St Neots thing, used to work a market, you know. Um, yeah, what we've done this week so far, well I was loaded, today's um, Tuesday, I was loaded Saturday night, ready to go for Monday down to Ponty Preed. Um, then last thing Sunday, I was having a drink with my wife in the garden, took a drink out of my drink, not realising a wasp had got into it, which stung my tongue, and it basically swelled up to the size of a golf ball. It took up the size of my mouth, and it was spitting out the front. I looked like a clown, you know, so I'll show you a picture. Um, but still had to go to Ponty Preed. Fortunately, I can drive with a fat tongue. <laughs> don't need my tongue to drive, so that went down to Ponty Preed yesterday and then I brought cardboard back to Warwick and then I picked this job up, which is not due till 11 o'clock. And um, I thought, I was when I tripped in Warwick, I was eight minutes away. Lovely, I'm gonna be there at half nine. I thought I might be able to get it on early, but me and the, the lovely gentleman from the office, which put a high vis on, were there, solar panels, and they're 30,000 pound each. And we had a quick go at trying to get it on with a tail lift and the guy went, I don't want to risk it. These are two, these is two high value goods. So we're waiting for the Forky. So the Forky apparently is going to turn up at um, 11 o'clock. Might be lucky, it might be here sooner. Um, and that's probably going to be my day, really. What I will do is I'll drop my first job. I'll do this job and hopefully manage to pick one up for the morning. But yeah, we're just going to kick around now, wait for the fork truck driver to, to, to arrive and um, get loaded. Mm -hmm. Bit of a touch, fingers crossed here. Yeah. Uh, it's now uh, 20 past 10 and a guy comes in on a mountain bike. I mean, you wouldn't happen to be the full truck driver by chance, would you? He said, I am, yeah. Not due until 11 o'clock. Well, you're not gonna go on break, are you? <laughs> so, f all things being equal, we might be able to get it on a bit early. I'm not gonna hold me breath, but, but I'm quietly confident. Yeah, that quiet confidence was misplaced. <laughs> Why come in at work at 20 past 10 if you're not going to start till 11? So you could go and sit in the staff room for three quarters of an hour. Maybe it's a very nice staff room. Maybe it does lovely coffee. I think I might go and shoot some videos. <laughs> See you in a bit. It's 11 o'clock on the dot. What are you going to do? Here we go. One, two, three, four, innit? Alright. I'll tell them why, for some reason I thought there's a big side by side. I thought they were like kind of standard pallets, but that's not it. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, I'll grab them out. Right, see them done. Ooh, warm today, innit? Lovely this. Like being on the. Uh, Costa del Sol. What's that? It's lovely being on a Costa del Sol. Would be lovely. They give me no paperwork. I've just remembered. And um, oh no, I haven't got an incomplete postcode. It's been refilled in now. Right, so I'm going to whack this. Yeah, no, I'm over here. Uh, right, so I'm going to whack this into the postcode now. Uh, let's have a look. Got me funny split screen phone. Oh, I'm going to record that just in case. You know. Uh, MI5 and all that, they might want you to... Know, well, I try not to um, record the places I go to and the people I pick up from just in case um, the people I pick up from don't want to be seen. And also it's like when you're recording full truck drivers and stuff like that, they might see them. So they, they did a thing recently about taking photos of people on beaches and you haven't got a right to... Um, just put people on videos. You haven't got a right to just take photos of people. So sometimes if these videos seem a little bit incomplete, it's not because they're being a bit incomplete, it's a bit like I'm trying not to. Um, you know, you, I'm advertising when places, you know, like poaching and all that kind of stuff. It's just, yeah, try to be a bit considerate, that's all. So, right, okay, that's now in. That's very nice, Blaze is on. Shush. Arrival time on this route is similar to A46 North. M6 South. 
Well, that's good to know. In 500 feet, turn left onto edge. I'm trying to sing away since I like my mother in law. It's too much too much. I love my mother in law, but I've never seen someone with the capacity to actually just talk so much about absolutely nothing. Anyway, we're off. It's a two drop, this one. We've got, uh, wait now. Uh, yeah, so we've got four very expensive solar panels on the back now. Uh, we did try and put them on a tail, like I said, which is a bit of a struggle. Um, uh, but we decided that, bearing in mind the cost of the panels and all that kind of stuff, it's probably wise not to do that. But the good news is, because I know he's going to sell storage as well, it's going to be forks all the way through. Because I kind of, <laughs> the guy can't go, well, we can't get them on with the, uh, the tail lift. So we're going to have to wait an hour and a half for the full truck. Then at the roundabout, you turn off. right onto Edge You make too much noise. Ah. Ha <laughs> ha! And try and talk now on silent ways. Probably a bit of overreaction, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, so we got four on. But it means if I get to the end of they've got a full truck, I'm going to go, you don't seriously expect me to take them off with a tail lift. So it's alright for me to take them off on my own with a tail lift, but not preserve us to put them on with a tail lift when they're like 30k each. So, forks all the way today, I'm expecting and hoping. We'll see. These jobs never work out quite the way you expect them to, do they really? So, but yeah, I mean, I had an hour and a half sitting there. I've done some stuff. I've done a couple of videos. I think with a truck driving thing, and we've had it with some of our drivers, just in general, if you can't stand waiting around, this is not the job for you. Particularly distribution centres like Lewis's or Amazon or Hermes, you can be there for hours. Find yourself something to do. Truck guitar, you know, or watch a series on Netflix, put your, put your feet up. I once saw an Arctic driver learning the banjo. I mean, that's actually a capital offence. Play banjo, go to jail. But um, still, something to do, I suppose. I make videos. Weirdly enough, I sit there and do, I go, well, well, I'm sitting around here, I've got a bit of time, I can just uh, record a couple of videos ready to whack up on the channel when I get a chance. So, but, yeah, so here we go. So what we're looking at at the moment, we're looking at um, rugby, 12 o'clock, hopefully away by rugby by half 12, one, into Sydney, it's for about three, hopefully done by about half three, four, and then Sydney, it's why you're coming back from, coming back through Bedford, you're coming back from Milton Keynes, that's, well, there's, a, there's a better than average chance I might have a possibility to pick something up in the morning, but as always with these videos, we will see. I'm going to turn this off now because I've had to have the window shut to record this and all the time I'm recording it, it is getting hotter than the greenhouse in here, so I'm going to put the air conditioning on now, so there we go. Ooh, that's better, better for me anyway, see you in a bit. Put out this dust cart here. Oh, see there we go. Yes, thank you very much, man. Uh, yeah. So what have we got now? 18 minutes. Still going to be there just before 12. It's easy. Full time, full time. Four pallets. We're going to do the changeover in the next one. One on, one off. And then I've got to get a phone number, and I've got to get uh, make, I'm going to make sure that they've got forks in the final bit because it's a self storage. The bloke said, "Well, it's a self storage. They have forks." I'm thinking. A lot of self storage is up in there, ain't got no forks. But if I get there, I haven't got any forks. It's not coming off on a tail. At least I don't think it is. Um, yeah, so the throat thing. I mentioned the throat thing earlier. That was kind of scary. I'm just sitting in the car and we're having a chat when there's some people around for like lunchtime and all that kind of stuff. And um, I went out there to have a drink and I felt something in my mouth. Like being injected with a needle. And I instantly, I'm very uncouth reaction I just went pfft, spat it out couldn't see anything and then I'm thinking did I did that happen maybe I imagined it maybe and then my tongue just started to get bigger and at first you go no no it's not getting bigger I'm imagining things and then you go no they're definitely getting bigger and they're, they're done they're definitely getting that and then before I know it you say like, absolutely nothing because it got so large it must have been about the size of a golf ball it took up the whole of my mouth and then expanded beyond my mouth to outside of my mouth. Something like that. But with a much bigger tongue. And um, the wife had to go up and the kids up from the airport because she just come back from anywhere. And she said, you know, she was very, very worried. She kept saying, you've got to be all right. You ring my mum's around the corner and text. And I went, I'm going to do mine. I'm going to do mine. But I didn't know if I was or I was at the affairs, but I kind of figure if things ever get heavy, you just, you know, you ring 911, 999, 999. 
Um, but I wasn't very worried because it never stopped me breathing. Because I could always breathe through my nose. And I kind of figured it doesn't matter how much the tongue goes that way, the passage from here to here is still relatively clear. If my throat had started to swell up, which it kind of did, it kind of come up a little bit, I think my glands must have come up and fight it or something like that, then I would have been more nervous. But it didn't give me the best night's sleep, hence the reason the trip to Wales started remarkably early. We started about 2 o'clock in the morning because I just wanted to give myself plenty of time. Then if I got tired on route, stop, have a sleep for a little while, drive a bit longer, have a sleep for a little bit while. Because you've got to be responsible. You know, you're driving a big truck, it's heavy, it's dangerous. You've got to be careful when it's kind of things like that, you know. So, but uh, it all went off all right. And like today, when you sit in there, well, I don't blame the full truck drivers. Like the guy said, he said, they don't start till 11 o'clock. They don't get paid overtime if they come in and they sort of shift it earlier. So, um, yeah, I don't blame you guys. If you can't stand waiting, you're in the wrong job. So, so yeah, here we go. It's about, yeah, about 15 minutes away, I think, now. So we'll go and get this one on and see where it leads next. Super. Well, we're nearly at the changeover. From the line, it's like a very low bridge. When you get up to it, it's very high bridge. But high bridge is low bridge. So, yeah, changeover's downhill. Oh, Wait a second. Just turning the air conditioner. Uh, yeah, we're just down, right, so we're nearly in the changeover. Um, yeah, I think it's down here. Oh, it's right, so we're going to get, so we've got to go down there, take off one air conditioning unit. Oh, excuse me, sir, hope you don't mind. Um, stick on another air conditioning unit. Then I've got to ring the geezer, I've got a phone number, um, and to let him know that we're on our way and to make sure that he's ready for us and that the folks will be there. Well, as normally, as, uh, as it always is the case, what you think is going to happen and what actually happens are two completely different things. It's not actually completely different, it's slightly different, actually. Uh, I'm not, they're not taking a pallet off me, but they are putting two pallets on. So whereas they're going to take one off and take one, put one on, instead I'm getting two pallets, one normal, one oversized, which is fine. They've got the whole vehicle, they've got the size of the bed, and if they don't fit, it's not my fault. Uh, so I'm just waiting for this man to come out of here now. Uh, your man from... Uh, with the electrical motor, and um, then just pull forward, open up the curtains, get a second one. At least they know what the lease is not like. I don't know, mate. You got a reference number? No, we won't expect you till next to a week next Thursday, that kind of thing. So just um, just go wait, get it on, and then off to St. Neots. Very nice. I thought while I'm sitting here waiting for your man to move, I'll give um, give Dave, I've got Dave to deliver to, give him a ring, uh, let him know I'm coming, making sure that he knows that he's now got uh, six pallets coming, oversized pallets, and to make sure the forks are there on site. And sure enough, it went to answer phone, because that's what happens every time that you ever ring anybody ever. The universal answer phone. I don't even know why anyone even has a phone number. I think what we should always be given individual phone numbers that um, automatically, you know, whatever number they are, however, whatever 13 random digits they are together, all just go to a great big answer phone machine that we can all just leave messages on that no one picks up. So, but I've done my bit, so we'll just have to wait and see. Like I say, I'll probably get a phone call. Normally people see it as like a number they don't recognise, ignore it, then ring their answer phone and go, damn, I needed to pick that one up and then run back straight away. So who knows, Dave, Dave, might be ringing me soon on the phone and let me know that he's on site waiting for me with forks. What are the odds? Remarkably slim. So what I'll do is I'll climb up and I'll, um, I'll get that panic truck out of the way and that'll give you some space to muck around with it. Just gone inside to get out the uh, long pallet, get them on, get that strapped over, down to some nets. Got the phone call back, there's forks on site. If Dave isn't there, I've got to talk to Vince. Vince apparently knows it. So this should be okay. And I'll put another bit in for one going, um, I've got to pick up in Bedford after that. It's not till five, unfortunately. But I have to hang around if I'm early. I've got to go to Shroom on C in the morning. It'll be me with me in between the job. 
They're trying to find a second man at the moment, so I'll probably I'll hang tight for them. Wait and see. That's it, loaded. And then time to go to St. Nets. Checked it on the sat nav. Aaron 17. That's all right. You know, I'll have like little figures in my head. And um, Aaron 17, ironically enough, it's a very short distance. The, the times go hour and a half, hour and a quarter, 45 minutes, 38 minutes, 18 minutes. Don't ask me why, I've got absolutely no idea. But that is uh, kind of how I gauge it. An hour and a quarter is nothing. So anything over an hour and a quarter starts to seem a bit long. An hour and 45 after that, and then it's sort of well, as long as you like, can it really? So, but no, should be okay. Like I say, we've spoken to the guy. They're expecting me. I'm gonna go and speak to Vince, the man with a truck, a fork truck. And we've now got six pallets. Should hopefully be off without too much trouble. Famous last words again, haven't it? At the roundabout, take the third exit onto M1 South. Well, I've had the phone call. Yeah, it looks like tomorrow's a goer. It's all a double-edged sword all the time, isn't it? I mean, when they turn around and said they've got to get someone to help me take the stuff off, that leads me to believe that's a lot of handball. That means there's going to be me and some other guy lumping the lorry. I mean, if it was just a few bits and pieces, you wouldn't make that. But for the amount of times where what I think it's going to be and what it turns out to be two, two completely different things. Oh, that's gonna be easy. It was a nightmare, and vice versa, right? You know, vice versa. Um, but it's done, the only snag is, I mean, I'm gonna be tipping in St. Neans at like two o'clock. I could be done at two o'clock. I'm probably gonna be St. Neans to Bedford, what? Three quarters for now. So, let's say I'm done by quarter past two, I could be in Bedford at three, and I'm not supposed to be there till five. So I could be kicking around in Bedford for like, two hours. It's a beautiful sunny day, could be at home, could be sitting in the garden, no, I'm going to be sitting in the truck in Bedford, but it's a living. Go straight on for 40 minutes to junction 13 to A421. Sounds like a good plan, but it's a living, it's what you've got to do, you've got to work, and if you can't handle the way you, you're in the wrong job, and on the plus side of things, it's what class is in between, and it's, about, it's the way I prefer to work. I do a job in the morning, that has been picked up the night before, drop it at sort of eight, nine o'clock, do the main job today, be done by two, then pick up for one in the evening, ready to be dropped in the morning. Because it's Shoreham, because it's like 125 miles, I'm gonna do some money for it. So at eight o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna be on my day's target, if you class it that way. Or I put half of that money that I get for the job in my brain over to today, so that's today's one done, and half over tomorrow, which means tomorrow I've only got to do a little bit, so kind of works, and I'm glad the seaside. I'm not sure, it's nice, so... Oh, well, I'll have to wait and see, but you guys probably won't, because, you know, I don't, I don't think I'll be safe with that one. You never know. You never know. this fact the other day on the radio about hermit crabs and I thought it was quite nice and what it is if a hermit crab is walking on the beach and um, that's my I'm not, I'm not joking about crabs I might say I don't know. Um, it comes across a shell because you know they're hermit crabs so the, what they do is, is they get bigger the shell on their back gets a bit too small so they take it off and they put another one on it's kind of a bit like moving out and if the shell is too big, they don't just walk away. What they do is they wait. Because, you know, it's like waiting for a bus. And you guarantee, you know, 15, 20 minutes later, another hermit crab's going to come walking down the beach that walks underneath the shell that might be slightly bigger, like might be the size in between. So what will then happen is that hermit crab will take off his shell put on the big shell that the first hermit crab didn't fit because it was too big, but leave behind a slightly smaller shell, which might be the right size for the new hermit crab, who will then take away shell, put the new shell on, everybody's happy. But it doesn't end there. They said, 
this can go on because of like the, 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 the difference in size structure in hermit crab shells, which I'm sure there's probably a graph about somewhere. Um, you can end up with 20 hermit crabs all in the same place, all kicking around this big shell, waiting for the first one to come along so they can all play, you know, keep check with watch on. But what I also really liked about it is the fact they work themselves out in size order and form an orderly queue. So the first guy comes along and it's a bit like, you know, that shell game magicians do where they flop it around, you've got to try and work out the bees. That's logistics for you, isn't it? There you go. We reckon we've got it sussed on these paddies going there. Crustaceans, hermit crabs, they had it sussed millions of years ago. They got the old thing sussed. Just a nice story I thought I'd show you. Still on our way to St. Neats, about a quarter of an hour now. Not too painful, we're on the A421. Light is running. It's kind of like a very easy. I'm on my way to the Black Cat. See you in a bit. Hello, Black Cat. Right, here we go. Uh, not what two miles, three minutes. Apparently, the yellow storage unit is just down here. I guess yellow storage units are no great secret, are they? Really? You know, it's not like it's not like someone's individual customer. So we're going to go down and we're going to see Dave or Vince, Steve, super fan Steve. Going to see him. Well, I don't. Know. That's uh, that's the radio one, Bob, and that's got me. Was probably put me on that one. I think it's, it's quite amusing, super fan Steve. If you haven't. Watch it. Good, good, quite funny. Shell car one's really good. Uh, yeah, stand at the other storage, meet the guy with the forks, get it off, and then what well, type of effort? Big one. One box alone is worth 30k. There's 120,000 pounds worth of gear on there. Yeah. I'm pleased they got here in one piece, put it that way. Forward. Yes, the man. Yes, the man was here with the forks. Lovely fellow. Company hovering by the gate, but he didn't let me out. Um, done in 10, 15 minutes, which of course would be lovely if it wasn't the fact that my next pickup is in Bedford at five, which means I've only got two and three quarter hours to do what is probably three quarters an hour journey. But I might be lucky. I might get there and get it off early, failing that. Um, um, yeah. Failing that, I'm just going to have to wait. It's not the end of the world, is it? I have a break, have a cup of tea, sit and watch a bit of YouTube, that kind of thing. YouTube, probably sit for YouTube. Um, well, maybe it will be there and loaded, loaded by three, coming back at base by four. Hope to hope to edit the video. Very nice. Right, I'm going to go now because it's a bit tight. Thanks, mate. Bit of a coach driver trick there. If your mirrors go through, 
you will go through. And maybe thought, you don't really want to be hovering around that gate, because that's the bit that I've got to take as tight as possible, otherwise I'm going to take the building out here with the window like the, um, the right hand side of your lorry. So right, so get out of here, pull over, upload the PODs, and then we're off to Bedford. I did say I might tell you my crab jug. I pull over for this. <laughs> I'm actually only going to pull over because we've got to do the PRD to put the pull over first time, you know, so. So there's these two crabs sitting on a beach. And one of them says, What's that? And the other one goes, That's a donut. He says, What's a donut? He says, you never had donuts. Oh, they're lovely. They're really light. They're tasty. They're sugary. They're fantastic. Oh, he says, yeah, I fancy a bit of the donut. He says, but let me just wash the sand off my claws. I don't want to get sand on my claws. So he goes down. He goes sideways down to the sea. And he washes sand off his claws. He goes sideways back again. The other crab said, the donut's gone. He says, where's the donut? The other crab says, I've eaten it. He says, what, all of it? He says, yes. Every last bit. And the first crab says, you know your problem? You're shellfish. Take care. Take money. <laughs>